Hi, I'm Agent Ford. Do you think you can help me solve another true crime mystery? What are the chances of stumbling upon a human bone while you are out for a walk? You probably think this is practically impossible, but today's case is going to make you think again. On February 2nd, 2009, a woman was walking her dog around the West Mesa area in New Mexico when the dog suddenly started sprinting and sniffing at a particular spot. When the woman finally caught up to her dog, she noticed that it was sniffing on a bone. The woman wasn't shocked at the sight of the bone since she thought it could have been an animal bone of some sort. To better understand the case, it is crucial to first understand West Mesa's evolution. The West Mesa was one of the many landmasses stretching from Albuquerque south to the north of Bernalillo in New Mexico until the area was quickly pegged for development. The population of West Mesa rocketed to well over 200,000 in the early 2000s. When the housing prices started to free fall in 2008, many people began abandoning the area. The population started declining rapidly and the area transformed into a ghost town. The woman that discovered the bone was one of the very few people who still believed that the market would recover and that the area would eventually go back to what it was in the early 2000s. That woman's name was Christine Ross, and she had been living in the area for over a year when the remains were discovered. When she was on her walk, Christine decided to take a picture of the bone and send it to her sister, a nurse, to make sure it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Her sister immediately replied, informing Christine that it could very well be a human bone. Upon hearing that, Christine called the police, who quickly confirmed it was indeed the remnants of a human body. The police began searching the area to find the other remains. Police then decided to set up a search of the site for any other bones. Their intent was to locate the remains of a single victim but after finding multiple bones, they understood the true gravity of the situation. Police were able to find remains belonging to 11 different women. Medical examiners found it impossible to pin down the exact cause of death, but it was clear they had all been murdered. Police concluded that they were dealing with a serial killer referred to as the West Mesa Bone Collector. Nine months after Christine's discovery, 10 out of 11 murdered victims were identified. Their names were Jamie Varela, Selenia Edwards, Monica Candelera, Virginia Cloven, Doreen Marquez, Julie Nito, Victoria Chavez, Evelyn Salazar, Veronica Romero, and Michelle Valdez. Michelle Valdez was four months pregnant at the time of her death making the 11th victim an unborn child. The victims were known prostitutes and drug users working in the area years prior. They were between the ages of 15 and 32, and most of them were Hispanic. Some of the casualties were Albuquerque natives, while others were assumed to be runaways. All the victims had in common the years that they had been reported missing between 2001 in 2005. Usually runaways and people living on the streets don't get the same police treatment when they go missing. It was only after the discovery of the remains that the police started taking the investigation seriously. Law enforcement promised the families of the victims that they would treat this case as a top priority, and initially, that seemed to be true. The West Mesa murders were one of the most horrific cases Albuquerque had ever seen. Investigators had assembled a top-tier team of detectives, bringing in FBI profilers and working with law enforcement agencies around the state to try to figure out how the bones of 11 women had wound up in the area. However, even after multiple years, the police had no official suspect. When the information about the murder victims was released to the public, the police couldn't deny that a serial killer was operating right under their nose. Satellite imagery taken back in 2004 resurfaces showing a set of tire tracks going off the main road and ending right at the burial site. 
It turns out that a retention pond was installed in the area, causing the unintentional unearthing of the buried bones around the lower area where the extra water had been collected. This might have been a strange coincidence, but it was enough to reassure the public that the killer was no longer active at the moment. Apart from the ongoing investigation, one of the victim's families had also hired a private investigator named George Walker. In 2010, the PI began receiving some alarming phone calls and emails from an anonymous source who claimed to have information about the killer. However, no actual data was ever provided by the caller. Walker's theory is that the serial killer probably moved elsewhere, which is often the primary reason most serial killers aren't caught. They don't stop unless they are arrested or dead. So police began looking for suspects that had moved away, passed away, or had been thrown into jail in 2005 or 2006. The first suspect they had was called Ron Irwin. Irwin lived in Missouri, but he would often visit the West Mesa area. Police raided Irwin's home and found hundreds of pictures of all kinds of people living in Albuquerque, including eight of the victims who were unconscious when they were photographed. These photographs and the fact Irwin knew and hired some of the West Mesa victims were very suspicious, but he was quickly cleared of all charges. The search went on for months, but none of the leads ever came close to forming a suspect until one day an investigator stumbled across Lorenzo Montoya's file. In 1999, Lorenzo Montoya had been arrested for attempting to strangle a prostitute. He lived about two miles away from the burial site, and the dirt trails found on the satellite images led from Montoya's trailer to the burial site. Unfortunately, police couldn't call him in for further questioning because he was no longer alive. Montoya was shot dead in December 2006, the same year the unusual disappearances seemed to stop. Was that a coincidence, or was Lorenzo Montoya the one responsible for the murder of the West Mesa women? The police had another suspect named Joseph Blia, an Albuquerque native. Blia had been reported to police by his own wife when she started growing suspicious of his behavior. Joseph would often dump the garbage near the burial site. He would also usually pick up escorts, and he even had an extensive collection of women's jewelry and undergarments. Police had also found a plant tag on one of the victim's bodies, which traced back to one of the nurseries Blia frequently visited. He was arrested back in 2008 for assault. Currently, Joseph Blia is serving a 90-year prison sentence for various sexual assaults that came to light in 2014. According to FBI data released in 2011, 70% of serial killers' victims since 1985 have been women, mostly in their 20s and 30s. The West Mesa serial killer, or shall I say, the West Mesa bone collector, knew that these women who worked as escorts would be more vulnerable than most people. It would be easier to persuade them to get in the car, to take them to a stranded place, and ultimately kill them. Nobody would report them if they went missing for a week or even a month. Even if their family told the police about their disappearance, they wouldn't take their case seriously for their lifestyle. Police don't keep missing escorts and drug users on their top priority list. That is why they are the perfect victim. A serial killer expert and professor at the University of New Mexico stated, it wasn't just the police that ignored the victims. Albuquerqueans didn't relate to them. They considered them a bunch of hookers and drug addicts. He believed that there was no incentive in investigating a 10-year-old crime with the police thinking that the victims had it coming. Personally, I think that there wasn't much evidence for the police to go on. The forensic team couldn't identify the cause of death there were no witnesses and no forensic evidence. All they had were bones. It is believed that a second boneyard likely exists in the city, considering the vast amount of abandoned building sites that existed back then. The case is still unsolved to this day, and for all we know, the killer could even still be walking among us. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your fellow investigators. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you never miss a case. With that being said, stay safe, and I'll see you guys at the next crime scene.